here for NA, which has been uh, a ton of fun. We did the caster challenge last season. We were able to go to Dallas, and uh, two I'm ago. two scenes ago. Yeah, you're right. We had that uh, it's been a while. The, the non move up season uh, last season. So yeah, it's been a while. It's been a, a ton of fun casting with you. But we got one more match tonight. It's ATK versus Party Astronauts. Here we go. So straight into it, it looks like Party Astronauts going to be setting up for a B hit. This is a really interesting veto, folks, just to give some context. Well, we'll give it after the pistol round. As Donster's now got some action right on his doorstep. He's going to be dropped. Does some damage, but not able to find the frag. And there's his second follow-up. MOTM's coming into the connector late as well. He hears 10 stomping about, so that's one quick shot to dispatch him. The monster of Dems uh, no longer needs to be dealt with. Though JT will get a shot, he does get domed in turn. He's looking a little worse for the wear. Fady and JT now trying to battle it back. Fady knowing that he's got a player coming in from the flank and he'll get killed from the front. And it's a pretty comfortable pistol round for Party Astronauts. So what I was saying about the veto is this is a really interesting one. First map picked by Party Astronauts is going to be Overpass. Obviously a very comfortable map for them. Now second map is going to be Vertigo. And folks, if you were watching last night, you saw the ATK game on Vertigo, uh, which they won off of the back of an amazing performance from 10. He dropped 40 in the map. 40 kills. It was ridiculous. Uh, but, historically, it's not a good map for them. It's not a map they've had a lot of success on. They've played it, I think, like six or seven times now, and they've won maybe a sixth of those. Uh, so it's not been a great map for them uh, historically. I think maybe more than that, maybe 30-40% 30, of them. But uh, apparently they were so confident after last night's game that they decided to go ahead and it in the veto. Now, Party Astronauts have only played it once. They've only played one official on Vertigo. The thing is, that one official, they won 16-2 against the old Space Station roster. That's so, a pretty solid win there. Right? Like, is it a good map for them? I don't know. They've only played it once. It's really hard to draw conclusions from that. It's a wild card map, and it's a really bold map to pick against them. If we get to the decider, the decider is Dust 2, which we know is a strong map for ATK, but it's also a map that ATK, that Party Astronauts doesn't mind playing. They're a little weaker on it in their current iteration, but I know Ponalone in particular has never really shied away from it. So, uh, this is an interesting veto. I think, I think for Party Astronauts to win it, it's likely going to be a 2-0, and I think that if they can get through Vertigo, it's really going to be a contest on Dust 2. And I feel like ATK is a pretty good shot at taking it. Yeah, and absolutely. I mean, I, I want three maps tonight. This is the final cast of the season here online. So why not? We got two awesome teams here fighting for a, there. There's a lot on the line tonight. So I hope we get some competitive matches. But right now, it's going to be 4v3. Bomb has been planted. Domster is going to be able to grab one with the ump. But it's now 3v2. He's going to push up. He has an opportunity to get the kill on Stellar. Takes him down low, but doesn't convert the kill. It's now tens and downstairs, and you know when tens is still alive, he can make magic happen. He's waiting for that push in towards short. One thing to notice, no kit, but nice reaction there by Domster. It's going to be Stellar left alone. Both guys on the CT side are lit up, but so is Stellar. Ten is going to go ahead, tap that bomb, but no kit. He's going to have to hightail it out of there, or at least attempt to. Not going to happen. Stellar will get that kill. Party ast astronauts do exactly what they should, and that's going to be a round win. Two to nothing. Party astronauts, good start here. That was a force buy, though. It was an expensive force buy for the ATK side. So now you're going to see major investment into SMGs. Party has not trying to keep that economy healthy. They've got the one rifle, which they will toss over to MOTM. And the rest of the team just going to be trying to farm up a little cash with those SMGs, trying to find a little bit of bread uh, in the bread box so that they can bring it forward into their gun rounds. It's a heavy stack on towards B, and why not? Of course, he just got pistols. There's a single deeg on, well, actually two deegs on Fady and 10, so a little something to work with, but just not much. This bomb presumably eventually going to find its way over towards A, but right now Ben Lee's doing a little bit of scouting over on the B-bomb site. He's spotted two. He's got the Mac 10. He's found one. He's low now. Has to get out of there. Black Boy isn't going to try and run him down unsuccessfully, but that should confirm that there's heavy presence on towards the B-bomb site so that you can start to see players adjusting over towards A. Yeah, I was surprised Ben Leach was able to get out of there. He was lit up, and you can see the player was chasing him down. But the fact that he was able to get around that corner, that gave Stellar the opportunity to do a little bit of chip damage, as I don't think the player was waiting for Stellar to be posted up right there. But here we go. They're going to continue to push here. They know there's two men around this corner, but one of them is lit up. Stellar's going to take care of one. Here comes Fady with that 17 HP. Make it zero. Bomb will be planted. Ben Leach going to get a whole bunch of extra cash. He's already got two MAC-10 kills in this round. It's going to leave Black Poison all alone. That's going to be a long-distance Mac 10 there from him. And quick 3-0 here. Party Astronauts 
coming fast out of the gates. You love to see it, but ATK will buy up here. So now are they going to keep the full four SMGs? This is kind of the sticky situation you run into when you go for this full SMG buy. Uh, you wind up having to hang on to them. And it's fine because they've got plenty of money in the bank to buy in the next one, right? And they've got a full utility. So presumably here we're just going to see a fast hit, maybe just slam some utility onto a site, condense the angle, see if you can get a bomb plant out of it, and see if you can really put them into the crunch on the post plant. Four players moving toward the fountains early. It seems like that's going to be the case. A little bit of a hop, skip, and a jump here. And JT lining him up through the smoke. going to find one. Tens gets a second as well. So it seems like A is close to entry. That bomb needs to be retrieved now. It has been spilled onto the sidewalk. And they're beating a retreat very effectively. JT and Tens lock down the bathrooms. Now Party Ashdot's finding a little bit more resistance than they were hoping for. Yeah, Ponalon might be in a little bit of trouble here. You can see two guys in towards the connector area. If he tries to go down towards uh, the B site, they're going to be posted up waiting for him. But right now, it looks like party astronauts want to go over towards that A side. They've met a lot of resistance. Uh, Stellar's pretty lit up at this point. He's on 10 HP, so I feel like he's just got to be bait in this situation. Uh, it's a three-man setup over towards the A side for ATK. Tens will be there. JT as well as Fady. And here goes Ponalong will be the first one to peek. He's not going to have any luck. Neither will Stellar. That's going to leave MOTM left all alone over towards Long. 40 seconds on the clock. He's got to avoid all five players here. They probably have a good idea he's in this section of the map. But he will be watching the right spot here. Black Poison comes around the corner. The Shadow will give him away. So that's one kill for MOTM. But he's got four left to go here, Mike. That's going to be problematic. And it won't end up working out. First round for ATK. They are on the board. They make it 3-1. to one. Really, in that round, by that point, MOTM's whole job was just to try and do some damage. He only finds one, so it's not quite what he was hoping for. Two or more really been, would have been the ticket to put the pressure on towards ATK, but he's just not quite able to do it. So I have fairly good money going forward. They are going to have to reinvest uh, the one time. But the op is out for Pone alone. It's a full buy for the party astronauts. Like we said, that was really just a bonus round. Lots of SMGs up. Never going to really work out. Uh, well, you know, they, they could have gotten a bomb plan. It would have been nice, but... Uh, they weren't expecting too much out of the round. Now, the party asked not if they brought the full arsenal to bear. They are here to contest. They are here to make a serious game of this. I'm going to see what they can do. Very timid early on. They're not really taking any map control. Just kind of leaving players in the periphery to make sure there's no pushes from the CPs. Now they'll start to probe out a little bit towards Fountain. Take some control over on towards A. Just the one player left outside of B to make sure no big wrap or flank comes through. It's a pretty strong hold. Player up around the flower pots on long. That's going to be tens. And then two remaining players back towards site. So a conservative hold. No aggressive bathroom play like we saw in the last round with the rifles. They're just going to be content to let the party astronaut side come to them. Yeah, and if no flashes are used on the T side, tens might be in a little bit of trouble. But as I say that, he's actually going to push here. Here comes that flash I talked about. And MOTM is going to feed right there. Tens goes down. Flash doesn't work out for him. So CT is going to have to make an adjustment. They push one man in towards short A. It looks like the T's are going to be focusing on that area. JT will get uh, in that smoke. He's going to get flashed through. It didn't work last time. It's not going to work here. JT does get a kill off before he goes down, but Stellar trades it. Still a man in towards the A site. There's going to be backup coming up as well. Fady has an opportunity to get a kill here. Clearly, MOT, I'm not ready. Almost a triple opportunity, but he only gets one. Black Poison left over towards Truck. Now 3v2, 20 seconds on the clock. they got to get that bomb, Mike. Black Poison's playing this conservatively, though. I think they may think they've cleared it out. He's dropped low, and there's already a player up by Dumpster, so that is Ben Leet. But as you said, time really becoming an issue here. There is going to be the spot from Ben, though, so they'll get the plant. They'll get the... Poison as well. The conservative call would be pistol armor, but the conservative call... Uh, is not going to be pulled. Tens has the scout, but otherwise they're up for full rifles. For the party astronauts, now if they win this round against a somewhat limited ATK, they're going to be in a nice position to really chunk up that lead. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't just get a dig on Tens. We know how dirty he can be with that, but he'll opt to go with the scout in this sixth round. And again, seems to be kind of slow here for the party astronauts to start out. Black Poison going to go with a fast pace there. It gets aggressive in towards short. He's able to grab one. He will be traded out. Domster's going to get a double as a result. So now one man advantage here for ATK. T's seem to be wanting to go towards the A site. JT is set up for this. Here comes a man in towards short A. You can see Ben Lee will continue to push up. He will meet the end of JT's M4. It's going to be Pawn alone, left alone versus three. And he's got to get a quick pick here. 
But uh, all players are going to be coming from the CT side, so he technically doesn't have to worry about players coming from behind him, but he can't really have that knowledge. So let's see if Ponalong can make anything of this round. The one advantage he has, he has plenty of time, and he has the bomb as well. He knows where one player is. He spotted the bows. He's going to get the shot on the second. Really should be anticipating the first, swinging on him, but for some reason he's not checking for it at all. Knew he was there. Maybe he thought that player had slunk off towards the Optimus and that they'd become one and the same. Unfortunately for Ponalong, there is a second player in position and so he will lose his life. And so they had ATK on the edge, but ATK is forced by certainly justified here. They made it work beautifully. And now the buy is going to have to come back from Party Ashtoth. I think this is a double eco situation, so we might see them buy into it. Uh, I think this is going to be a slight technical issue going on here. We're getting something sorted out. Looking at the pings, I don't see anything terribly obvious. MOTM has some nutty ping, but I think that's pretty typical for him, unfortunately. Um... So that pause has already been canceled. Something was sorted out, whatever it was. We like those uh, tech pauses. We like those real quick ones, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's what we're going to get back into it. And it is going to be the full force in. You've got the hero AK on MOTM. So they've got something to go with in terms of pure fragging power. And they've got a bunch of utility as well to make a case for this. So early aggressive smokes for ATK, trying to lock down that monster tunnel, get Domster into position. He was very good in the aggressive push into construction last round now he's going for some spams and dumpster seems like he might have a bead through these smokes there's not a ton of damage on the ponalone yeah ponalone wasn't even able to spot anybody out before he took a whole bunch of damage but here comes the hit on towards b still a little bit of utility left after this they're gonna push through that smoke dumpster no issue taking him down he's gonna get a double as well ponalone gonna be lit up right around that corner so he's probably next up Looks like they want to try to push through that smoke. Fady right around the corner, and all the ATK players are already here. They're going to try to get that bomb down. Not going to work out as JT catches one through that smoke. Nice opportunity there for Ponalone, but just too many crosshairs on his position. So ATK have brought it back within one. And the money on the side of Party Astronauts is not very good around 2K. So they're probably going to have to save here unless they have some sort of drastic uh, call coming into this one. But the AWP will be out on 10s right now. And we've seen he's been taking that AWP more often than Black Poison, I feel like. And whenever I think of ATK, I think of Black Poison's, you know, he's he's sick with the AWP. So it's interesting to see the, him picking up that AWP as opposed to uh, Black Poison. But then, then again, it's 10s, you know. He can do whatever he wants, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, we were seeing this quite a bit. It seemed like it just sort of depended on spawn or depending on who was feeling it. Um, so they've been they've been giving with the hot hand. That's tens, maybe not the hot hand right now. He gets a run right down. Robbie gets a follow up frag as well. Fady's got to be careful here. He will survive, but just for a moment, this has gotten very expensive indeed. Black poison in the back of sight should be okay to hang on here though. MOTM's quite low. He's looking to clear out that flank. He's not scoping in though, and Domster will take advantage of that to find the frag and recover the AWP. Still expensive. Party astronauts would have loved to get a bomb plan out of that, but they'll be okay with what they wound up with. The only concern is you, if you get the AWP up here for Ponalone, it would be Glass Cannon. So he'll go to the Krieg instead. This team does like their Kriegs. We'll see what they can find. On the other side, it's going to be two scopes, an AUG and an AWP. And the AWP back in the hands of old Ten Torino. We'll see what he can find with it. Not out to uh, the early start that he had yesterday. So again, overpass is a strong map for the party astronauts. So we do expect to see the have success here. MOTM decapitates one. Swings away off the second. Nearly had the lineup from Domster. If he just held mouse one, might have found it. But he does fall off without really taking any damage. So that is definitely a victory in his books. Yeah, big opening. And I like the fast-paced claw there to get MOTM over towards that short B area. Look at Stellar actually taking Fady down to 9 HP through that smoke. So it happened to Ponalone last round. And it's going to earn the two rounds ago. And it's uh, going to be returned here on Fady. He's pretty lit up. But they have shored up that defense over towards that B site. They've got an extra man over there. So the A site is pretty weak right now. But Party Astronauts don't force their hand off that opening kill. I like that. They're going to take their time, see if they can get another quick pick, then make their decision. So getting a little bit more map control over towards the A side. You can see Ben Leitz is starting to push up towards short A. And I think uh, Ponalone is going to be checking out long hair. Long A here momentarily. Two guys coming up towards connector. So this is the right call here technically. But let's see if they get there before rotation comes in. That's a bunch of information just gained by Domster. He took a flash peek out in towards Khan and nobody's there. So you're seeing JT already start to rotate, although... He's hesitant. I'm not quite sure what he's hearing. Now he's hearing footsteps beating a path towards the A-bomb site. So this is going to get awkward. Ten somehow wasn't spotted out by Ben Lee. Now they certainly know where he is. So they're going to molly bank to oblivion. So there's no chance for him to get back through. 
tons of utility down. Bomb planted. You're already seeing Fady fall off of this, and I think this is going to be a four-man save call. They don't really have any util, one single smoke to try and get back on the site. So this is an uber conservative call out for ATK, but I don't hate it, to be quite frank. It's just so hard to get back up those stairs when you're all in the same position, and there's five crosshairs on site to call you out on it. Yeah, absolutely. If they maybe had a man coming up towards connector for a flank, that might be a call you go for. But the smoke was there over towards dumpster, a molly in towards bank. And uh, Party Astronauts still had a little bit of utility to work with. They had a molly on Robbie, so they could have extended that uh, position, holding that ATK off coming in from CT. So, I mean, smart, I think, call there from ATK. They do give up the lead, but, I mean, it's a one-round difference right now. Not that big a deal. So, Party Astronauts going to be able to get whatever they want in this situation. On the flip side, they save four guns, so they only got a rebuy on one of them. Fady should be able to drop right there. So, everybody is going to be bought up. Pretty pretty good utility as well inside of ATK. So this should be a, a big round here, especially for ATK. We're going to see what they can find. Tens once again trying to find something with the op. He hasn't really been going aggressive with it, though. He's been holding fairly passive on towards A and kind of letting uh, the action come from the other side to see what he can find. There is one player in towards the bottom of connected that JT is just trying to hold off against. And heavy presence towards B early for both sides. Three tucked in. To the site itself and three right at the gates so no damage exchanged yet but they're definitely aware of each other's presence lots of noise being made and you're seeing a little bit of shifting over on the super comfortable in the positions they're in trying to find something anything to work with here yeah party astronauts definitely taking this one slow they didn't really get any sort of information they wanted over towards that b site or if they did get any information, they didn't like what they saw. So they're going to head over towards that A side, but it's a three-man stack. One guy pushed up with that AWP. You can see Tens will take that initial action while that other player will be there for support. You can see JT watching that connector area with the AWP. But it'll be a three-man push towards Long, maybe more. As you can see, there's still two Ts hanging around towards Picnic. But JT looks like he's going to start pushing up here. And they could really come in in a flank and ruin this plan here from Party Astronauts if they have the right timing. 30 seconds left on the clock. This hit, hit it has to start soon. Here's the problem. There are two players working that were closer to Bastards right now. So there's going to be lots of guns all over the place. JT gets traded out. Ten's now alive, but they know his position. He's found more, though. He keeps striking, and he's whittling away the numbers from Party Astronauts. Now they're forced into the angle. They've got to take the fight. What a shot from MOTM to find it. And recognizing the spam knows he has time to get the oh. uh, bomb down. That was actually it. Team Flash, that slowed Black Poison. He might have been able to deny this. As it is, the bomb will be planted. Somehow, MOTM survives that, but only for a moment. Black Poison has it. That was interesting. Tom, Domster actually 100% Team Flash Black Poison. Otherwise, there would have been no chance for MOTM to get that plant. Yeah, and there was a, a window for him to put the bomb down originally, and he would have had time to get out of there. Obviously, he had no idea the Team Flash came in, but um, he got off it. He checked real quick and then put it down again. And that gave them an opportunity to get the jump on him as he tried to exit after planting that bomb. So we're tied up, Mike. It's 5-5. Five to five. We got a good one on our hands. This is our first map tonight of potentially three. And let's see what we got here in the 11th round. Off will remain on 10s, as you can imagine. And the op is out on Pone alone. Let's see what he's going to do. Looks like he's going to get aggressive here with that op over to either towards Monster or Short B. Do you know any other style for Pone alone than getting aggressive? No, nope, that, that's why he's one of my favorite oppers in uh, MDL. And he can flick it, too. He can flick. He gets hungry. Some panel spam here. Black Poison not going to be feeling too healthy after it. He's just trying to play the game of geometry, and sometimes geometry betrays you. So it is going to be Pone alone taking that aggro peak. If there's a player down towards Monster trying to swing back up, and Pone alone is going to find him. As it is, there is a player tucked water and a player tucked towards barrels. So he's holding for that. A smoke, though, going to ruin his day and say, you know what? We don't want to play with that game. We don't we don't want to deal with this Adele. JT's got a spot, tiny little bit of damage, but not quite a frag, and now they know that the AWP of Tens is there once more. So they can react to that information. It seems that the full reaction to that information is gonna to be to head towards B. Quick rotations available and actually Fady coming down to support, but MUTM's already found an opening onto the site. It's gonna be the black poison to hold it. He's gotta stay strong here, and Stellar finds a kill into heaven. That's vital. He will be traded out, but that gives away the information, and the hit's gonna come through. MLTM already forward isn't quite quick enough to find black poison. Now the bomb should be plantable, and it's just gonna be tens in the 183 to try and find it. MOTM, swift decapitation, swift end to his life. Four kills in the round for MOTM. He is having a great start. 
to this map, and that's a sixth round for Party Astronauts. And, 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 Mitch, it's a ruined economy for ATK. Yeah, not not good there. Great round there from MOTM. Uh, gets that quad kill. Nice job getting uh, the entry in towards site. And then JT kind of fed a kill there, trying to defend that bomb plant that uh, didn't come in at that time. Uh, he ran through that smoke in towards heaven. That was a free kill for MOTM in that situation. Now, he'll take that all day. It was just an interesting choice from JT because the other CT wasn't there to trade for it. But nonetheless, it's 6-5. to five. It's going to be pistols for ATK. It looks like they were going to be hitting B pretty fast. And this is exactly where ATK wants them to go. So, I mean, this is the, a good opportunity for them to turn this around around. But it's going to be two kills there for ATK. They try to grab one coming in from short B. Not going to work out. But we are evened up. 3v3, and I'm wondering if ATK can pick up any of these rifles. That would be huge for them right now. So now this gets interesting. Hardy astronauts are just going to kind of sit on this. They got a little, a little adventurous in there, and they're quite low is the problem. Stellar and MOTM are susceptible to these pistols now. Stellar in particular, and they don't want to abandon this position entirely because they don't want to stop babysitting those guns. They know if they let those get picked up, they might come back to bite them either in this round or in the following. And considering the money from ATK, that would actually just be such a blessing. JT pops off a shot. He had Ponalone just expose the wrong direction. That could have been massive. But as it is right now, it's about getting the rifle out of the spot. They have retrieved it. JT has an AK to his name now. And it looks like party astronauts are going to reconsider their options and start to head towards A. And that is the conservative call. One might even say the correct call in this situation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're going to see if MOTM goes in a little bit early because that could be Black Poison's opportunity in this situation. But the trailing T's are going to come join MOTM. Stellar's going to get caught out there. I think he might have spotted the shadow in that situation. But quick flick there by Poison with a P250 earns him a kill. And he's going to peek out again. Ponalone just goes ahead and tries to plant it. And he will get it just in time. It's going to be 2v2 with a retake coming in. No utility on the side of ATK. They don't have a kit either. No armor. But they've made something in this round, and they've picked up an AK to help them on this retake. Ponalone going to watch that cross over towards default bomb box. He doesn't hit the initial shot, but MOTM right around the corner. Domster gets lit up. MOTM's been discovered. There comes a flash. That enables MOTM to pop out. That'll leave Domster all alone, and Ponalone will get the kill. So party astronauts, uh, they should have been scared there for a little bit. They barely got that bomb down. That was almost a situation where ATK were victims of their own success. Because they made it so expensive for party astronauts, right? But once they have those two AKs, they're unarmored. Yes, it's a 2v2, but strong post-plant scenarios, no kits, time ticking down. If they save those two AKs, they have a buy right here. They have an extra round with a buy with one player on towards an SMG. That's fantastic. But because they're so close, because it's a 2v2, because they know both players are potentially low and actually vulnerable to being fragged, they press the issue. They decide that they're going to hunt it. And I can't blame them for doing it. It's very viable. It's, it's winnable. It's such a tough scenario, and we would have had much higher percentage into those rounds if we kept those AKs alive. So, struggling with success. Isn't that a DJ Khaled album? That's like suffering from success. It's like hand on his. You know what? I haven't listened to too many DJ Khaled albums. Either, it's possible. It's um, it sounds right. That sounds like something he would uh, name his album. I am not sure though, Mike. It is. It's uh, it's the picture. It's a picture of DJ Khaled like doing the face palm and suffering from success. Oh, hard life, man. Seventh studio album. Wikipedia says the seventh studio album by American disc jockey and producer DJ Khaled. I don't know. We called people disc jockeys anymore. I thought that was like the. 60s radio hosts we called them disc jockeys like the american graffiti era of radio hosts but apparently that's still a thing mitch interesting interesting yeah i haven't heard that term and i don't even know how long wow since dinosaurs roamed the earth have you seen american graffiti uh no tell me about it it's a classic movie classic george lucas movie pre-star wars uh it's like i don't know it's a bunch of kids in california in like beach culture and dune buggies and racing and uh right before they go off to college and it's a good movie it's a classic it's like uh it's a it's part of that beautiful era of movies where movies didn't really have a point movies like diner and and stuff like that just like coming of age stories that didn't really have like a point but were were kind of awesome but there's a central character in it dj wolfman who is like the mysterious radio dj uh at the local station that everyone listens to and there's a plot point revolving around dj wolfman and getting him to play a song and it's a great movie it's a classic Highly recommend it to anyone watching right now. American Graffiti, very much a classic film, uh, worth a watch.
You know what? I'm going to watch that tonight, Mike, just for you. There you go. It's also where the name R2-D2 came from for Star Wars. Oh, okay. I like that reference. That's cool. They were doing editing for that movie, and uh, they would label different film reels. This is back when you had to stitch you know, film reels together to, to, to edit stuff. And they had one film reel that was labeled R2-D2. And at one point, um, George Lucas said, hey, pass me R2-D2. And that just like stuck in his brain. He was like, I'm going to use that at some point. That has a good ring to it. Yeah, that had some legs to it, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, that's a nice piece of trivia there. I would never have known that. That's cool. I don't know why I know that. Yeah. I heard it in a video <laughs> she gets you on Jeopardy, man. at some point. These are the things that occupy my brain as opposed to useful knowledge. But uh, as we've now stalled out through that part, That's nice to see if you're a party astronauts. This is again a very strong map for them, and this time they're up just against the pistols. It's gonna be Deagles, a little bit of armor on tens and black poison as the uh, South African side tries to get the economy healthy once more. So, coming in towards short B, they're basically doing the same thing they did last time. There were more players here for ATK. Uh, during their last eco. Penleet's going to get that opening kill on towards Fady. He has an opportunity to get one over towards Graffiti. Tens is able to take one down with that Deagle. We've talked about him and that Deagle a lot, but he's not going to be able to have enough for another player. Black Poison, last man coming in towards short B. Black Poison already lit up. He's just going to jiggle back and forth, and he will go down to Stellar's AK. And that's a, a pretty clean round there, Mike. Uh, Stellar lives through that on 5 HP, so they only lost one player. Uh, pretty much what you're expected to do in that situation, considering the buy on ATK. But nonetheless, um, that's going to help them build up their bank here a little bit. So let's see what they can do. Tens has the off again. He's uh, a little slower today. We've, we've been talking about this a little bit. It seems like in ATK's games through playoffs so far, it's been kind of, is Tens on? All right, we win the map. Is Tens off? Cool, we're losing. Uh, they, they just can't be relying on that going forward. I mean, I, I don't know if you saw this. Everyone's obviously on Ten's watch right now. That's a really nice name to start things off. Maybe we should talk about the round right now. I'll, I'll shut up about uh, other stuff. But it does seem like a pink down early. Party Astronaut's starting to take a little bit of control outside of B, but at the cost of MOTM's life. And considering he's their lead fragger right now, that's a pretty heavy cost to pay. So they are going to group up. But JT is now working his way back into Connect. They're going to upset any potential rotates they're going for. Ben Leap making a little bit of noise right at the top of the stairs is trying to draw focus back to the Avon site or at least work his way down to do some damage. And he gets tagged, and there's the frag. So numbers brought back. Still a little bit of a disadvantage in health, but it's certainly looking a lot better than it was a moment ago. JT was going to play a big role in that round. Uh, he was in the middle of the defense. Ben Leap's good job clearing that position out. Now they pretty much have their choice of A or B, and ATK is going to have two guys over towards that A site, two over towards B. Right now, Party Astronauts are favoring that A side. You can see three guys pushing up in towards Connector. The bomb's pretty far away now. You can see Ponalon trying to clear out those close spots with the AWP. But three men are starting to push up towards short A, so they will meet Tens as well as Fady. So Tens has that AWP, so I imagine he's going to creep around this corner. He's going to get that opening kill. That's big. He's going to try to do it again. That's not going to work out. Wide peak, not going to happen. And it's going to be 3v3 as they push on towards site. You can see the CTs coming in to try and do something about this. But Fady will hold on here. Wait for their teammates to come in. You got a long flank coming in for Black Poison, but they've taken control towards the bathroom. So he may not have much success in ringing this out. Robbie's going to get the check. That was maybe a little bit bold. Didn't quite have the blind side shot he was hoping for. And Black Poison should know this second player in here. So close up. Pone alone can't clear the off out. And now Black Poison and Fady are going to complete the retake. They will get the defuse and with it the sixth round as well. There will be fine money to buy back into it. And it's going to be a little haggard on the ATK side. They're going to have to fully reinvest to make this happen. But they do retrieve the double op, which could be a really nice piece going forward. Presumably Black Poison and Tens both going to be picking those guns up. And that's going to be one of the strongest defenses we've seen out from this ATK side yet. Uh, so what I was saying earlier is it does feel like in, in, at various points of this ATK side, it's, it's just is Tens fragging uh, or not. And if he is, they have a lot of success. If he's not, they struggle. And that's a problem because he is just a stand-in for them. Obviously, all of the North American CS scene right now is on Tens watch, trying to figure out if there's a certain classic storied org that he might be joining. And based on the fact that he tweeted out I, several eyes emojis earlier. Yeah. <laughs> used to say what that might happen. 
I saw that. He knows something we don't. Hopefully we hear something soon. But here comes a hit on towards that B site. Two man set up. Fady gonna get that opening kill. Robbie desperately trying to trade this out. He's able to grab one, make it a double. Has an opportunity for a third, but Black Poison's off. And go ahead, plant that bomb. Ten in heaven. He's gonna be taken down. And that's gonna be a round win for the party astronauts. So they will go into the second half up nine to six. And now we'll switch over to the CT side. But how about MOTM? He's having a heck of a night tonight, Mike. He really is fragging hard, big entries. He was doing this the last time they played an overpass game that we watched, and it had very similar results. So this is obviously a strong match for a map for MOTM. It's a strong map for the roster as a whole. And a 9-6 T half is a great way to get started into this best of three series. I, I at this point, I think that it's likely Party Gas Nots take this first map fairly comfortably. Obviously, ATK can rally for sure, but it's looking solid, and we kind of knew that coming into the veto. I mean, one overpass got picked up. It's like, all right, this is Party Astronauts, possibly their best map. They're comfortable on overpass. They're going to be fine here. What's really going to be interesting is Vertigo. That is the wild card. Obviously, we just saw ATK play it, but it wasn't that they had some great master plan for Vertigo. It was that 10s dropped 40. Yeah, the master plan was let 10s do what 10 does, and uh, he dropped 40. But, I mean, that's I, that's an issue because you're too reliant on him going off. So, I mean, they, they did a good job on it last time. They they got the win, so why not go for it? But at the same time, I think it's just a wild card for them. They'd love to be able to make this one competitive get a, a win here on overpass. Right now down three, so not that big of a deal. But uh, here comes the pistol round. Here we go. See what we got. We got to smoke two flashes to try and get onto a site, presumably. Actually, some more utility picked up by JT, so definitely a plan going into this. Ben will be taking the hit on towards the kit, as he usually does. The party astronaut side is going to be trying to get out here. I do have to say one thing to evaluate going into this. There are two anime profile picks on the party astronaut side to one on the ATK side, so clearly the balance of power rests with party astronauts. Robbie at the top of connector is going to have a lot of fun here. They are chasing him down. He's got support from Stellar, though, but leaves Stellar on an island, and Stellar goes down. He will get one in trade, so the numbers are evened up as a kill came elsewhere on the server. But they are going to start to make their way on towards A. MOTM is going to be coming in from the flank, but a quick opener for Fady is going to make this a lot easier for the South African side to hang on to. And that's a big frag to find for Domster. It's all on Ponalone now. Trying to make this happen to try and get back through. Let's see what he can do. Yeah, this one's definitely going to be tough. He's got tens in his face once he comes out of bank. And he will eventually push out, and that's going to be his death. Tens meets him with the Glock, and it's going to be 9-7. to seven. Big pistol round there for ATK. So let's see what they're going to buy up here. They are taking their time. There we go. Okay, two, uh, two AKs, Mac 10 make it three AKs, and then a Galil on Black Poison. So they spend all of their money on the flip side. It's just going to be a full save here. Ben Leeds calling for everybody to save that money. It's going to be all USPs, no armor, no utility. So this one should be one. This, this should be easy for ATK here. If they don't, if they lose one, that this one, this is going to be problematic. This is the old snake in a can approach. This is the snake in the can strat. Everybody get down towards water. If they round around this corner, we give them a really nasty surprise. And if they don't, well, we're about as useless as a snake in the can put on the shelf. Not going to do much of anything at all. As it is, now they start to transition back towards A, and ATK just showing patience, so they're going to move the snake. They're going to head on over to A, see if they can't surprise somebody over towards this bomb site. Don't think it's really going to happen. JT's probing here with a MAC-10, but he should likely realize the situation with the stack in just a moment and start to uh, make some moolah with that SMG. Bomb shifting over this direction, though, so if they stay tucked, if they don't expose themselves, maybe that'll work out, but they've just spotted ahead towards Dumpster, so they know that at least somebody's here and ready to play. And meanwhile, Ben Leet's going to work his way up the connector, so they're kind of hemmed in now. ATK might be moving into the stack. They should be able to come out on top still, but you never know. Once they've committed in, this can get chaotic. First player drops, that's Ponalone, and the bare USP is just not finding much. They're all getting erased. One single frag for Robbie. And now on the periphery, it's Ben Lee trying to tap away. He will take one more. So just a little bit of damage done. Maybe potential for a bit more. Domster is low. One quick tap to the head would take care of him. But Domster's also playing pretty tucked because he does not want to give that kill away. Yeah, they don't want to give away that gun. So Tez is definitely going to be staying in this position. And Ben Lee's just going to get chipped away eventually. Tens will 
get the kill and we are one away from being tied up it's nine to eight and if you're party astronauts you have the right stack i mean now is your opportunity to potentially win that round but at the same time all you have is usps no utility uh there was a nice flash that came in there from atk that flashed that initial ct uh, that popped out and it was first visible for ATK. So that was an easy kill for them. And that just lightens the load that much more. And it's only four guys with USPs. So ATK, well done. One away from being tied up. But the buy round will come out here for Party Astronauts. Five M4s. Good amount of utility. Decent. No head armor. But looks like we're going to get a little bit of action in towards Connector. If they push out, that flash comes in. That's not going to work out. Stellar is not flashed at all. So that's an easy kill for him. He'll fade back. And uh, looks like ATK still wants to aggress here. We're going to have Ben Leeds up close. He's going to spot that shadow first. Good timing on the flash. He does some damage, but doesn't get the kill. Domster able to put him down, but there's still two men left in our sight. They're able to take one, but the double swing ends up working for Domster, and he's been playing well lately. What a shot there by Tens in towards heaven. That's going to leave Pone alone, all alone. I feel like we've said that a few times tonight, Mike. He's got a 3v1 situation, able to grab one. This is doable. Look, they don't call him solo for nothing. There's the second. He's looking for the third. Doesn't quite have it. Tens has the timing on the shot, and he will avert disaster round controlled by ATK. Only one sole survivor, so they're going to fully reinvest, but it should probably be uh, an eco mirror round, maybe a pistol arm around out from the party astronaut. So they brought the score line tied, and they've got full rifles to rock through here. Minimal investment out from PA. So this is not going to be the round to party. I gotta say, last round was like the new meta defining. It was five AKs against five M4s, and it's been a long time since I've seen a round like that. No scopes on the server. This time there is one for Dumpster, but not much more. MOTM's tagged down quite low early, oh. but he's going to be able to get a fadeaway deed shot. They leave themselves exposed towards the bathrooms. There's no real reason to do that. Oh, nearly another opportunity for Ponalone looking for that headshot angle. But now they will start to bring the kills back, and ETK will bring this back to a comfortable line against the system. Yeah, Robbie's going to try and do a little something here. That flash should be able to aid him. It does eventually blind that player, but I think he spotted him out before he was full white, and Fady's going to dismiss another player. So that's a double for him on the round. Again, it'll be Ben Leach, last man standing. Versus four, all he has is a Deeg. I don't think they know his position just based on the way that looked like they're running away from the site. They will leave a man behind. Tens is in the area as well, but he has been discovered. Ben Leeds' goal right now is just to get a kill here. If you get a rifle, that, that's fantastic. But I can't imagine ATK is going to let that happen. So they're even going to molly him off. They're going to use that money to keep him away. But uh, Fady's going to get out of there. Yeah, he's already on his way out. I'm entirely sure what he's doing. Maybe try to come from behind. But Black Poison will get the kill, and ATK have the lead. Party astronauts are really good on this map, but right now ATK is on a little bit of a roll, Mike. This is definitely a comeback. This is some resilience. This is now, what, five or four rounds in a row? Yeah. So ATK making a case for it. It is going to be guns out now, and Ponalone does have the op. Full op on the server. This could be a bit of a game changer for the party astronauts, but they definitely got to get their teeth in this. They got to get their legs under them and get ready to resist and prevent uh, ATK from building that steam that we know they can play with. Yeah, it looks like a fast execute here, too. A ton of utility being spent. They're going to send three guys over towards short B2. Likely will be coming from Monster. That nade, oh, it's not going to be in, in the right area. That could have been really chunky. Two players right next to each other. And here we go. A hit on towards B will begin. It's going to be Ben Leach meeting, too. He has an opportunity for more. That's a triple for Ben Leach. Robbie adds one as well. And this hit is not working out. JT left versus three. So party astronauts should be able to tie this up. Unless JT has some sort of magic happen here. Flash going to come over. Robbie will go down. Do they peek off of that? They do, but don't get the kill. It's going to leave MOTM and Pone alone. The two men left standing, and JT is going to get lit up. He's down to 19. He does have time. He does have control of the bomb, so he can head out of here and just kind of bamboozle or mess with party astronauts a little bit. He certainly has the time for it. He's going to do exactly that. Well, why not? You know you're not going to win a straight-up fight against two with 19 HP where one tap is your death. So why not try and sneak away and find a bomb plant? If he does, they're likely going to be able to buy comfortably in the next one. They're going to keep this going and not really have an issue going forward. Uh, they may still be able to get a buy up next, but a bomb plant would certainly make things easier for them. So ATK going to be able to get that as well. No one's even starting to rotate. They're still convinced he's going to play against them on this B-bomb site. Ponalone's starting to get curious, realizes, hey... Uh, nobody's here. Maybe, Ian, you should go check 
upper and see if he's planning A. And indeed, that's exactly what's going to happen. Now he hears the utility. Now the ticket's coming in. JT's got this bomb down. So that's a ton of cash earned up for his squad. The question is, can he get off the bomb backs? And the answer to that is probably a harsh no. They'll play in unison. They'll play together. JT trying to work some headshot angles, trying to work some sort of damage here. But it is Pone alone to take him down. Defuse comes through. They avert any further economic damage. And they will bring Scoreline back tied. Yeah, nice attempt there. If he got that opening player coming out of Dumpster, that certainly would have been realistic for him to make that work. Nice job with that smoke, but uh, Ponalone comes out with the USP. They clearly had an idea that that guy was low, so he gets the job done. Diffuse comes in. We are tied up once again. We have a heck of a map going on right now here for the first one of potentially three. A lot on the line for both of these teams. Let's see what we're going to get here out of the 21st round. Full buy coming out from ATK after losing. They spend a lot of money here, Mike. Let's see what they can do. Pone alone. He's got the op up again, of course, bringing it through from the last round. And he is, of course, with that AWP in hand, but early damage instead is going to go towards Domstrew, who's worked his way outside of construction, but has lost a big chunk of health to do so. Got him into the position, but at what cost, Mitch? Now, start to edge forward, and it is going to be aggression out that same construction spot. Domster, they finish what they started. They do find the frag, so a man disadvantage ATK and the loss of all map control over towards the B side of the map is pretty much going to commit them to this play onto A, and Fady right around the flower pot. He may find himself on a date with MOTM in just a moment. Yeah, MOTM. Oh, poor timing on uh, looking away from that flash. Nice job by Fady. He gets the jump, gets the kill. Just a little bit unlucky in that situation. So now going to be 4v4. ATK still on the path to go towards A. There's a two-man setup there. Stellar is going to be set up for a flash. I imagine Robbie and Ponalone will pop out when that happens. But the flash comes in too late. Robbie goes down. Ponalone responds. They're going to try to push up from short. Nice flick there by Ponalone. And Fady is going to be taken down by Stellar. And he's going to get a double. Nice job on that swing. And Party Astronauts regain the lead. It's 11-10. And I'm loving this so far. This has been awesome. That is really excellent. And it's important that they prevent the bomb plant from going down as well. Now they force out an eco from ATK. Maybe a little bit invested here, but it shouldn't be much. Domster needs to save up for that AWP. So just a couple of upgraded pistols, a set of armor on Domster. Might even be a little bit more of an investment than they des definitely need. But they're going to go for it. They're going to be trying to get the bomb plant out here. Um, that molly down is certainly going to slow them for a moment. A flash peak may come in here. Benley to set up for it. But he's going to be a player with a lot in his scope as they come through. Smoke down. He spotted them, though. The snow no. come in. It's a little tricky to do that with the Krieg. He's going to drop. Stellar now needs to hang on, and that's a rifle given over, which they will pick up, but it will be neutralized. Stellar and Robbie lock it down between utility and pure fragging power. They make sure a no more shall be gained for ATK. Yeah, I thought Ben Lee was about to frag a hard there, but he peeked right before the, the smoke popped. And uh, they've spotted him out, and they were just able to spray him down. But he does take down one, and then he was able to trust in his teammates that they'll be able to come in and clean. PM basically, typically you look at the other guys to to be fragging, but he's been playing really well here in this playoff. So, I think is he leading the way right now? He does have the most kills. He's one ahead of uh, Ian. But uh, talking about this 23rd round, there's going to be two guys in towards Connector. That nade should be chunky. Black Poison taking down a 65 HP. Clearly, they have no idea the other one's on the side of that smoke. And this should be interesting to see how this plays out. Black Poison, uh, actually, the, let them go by. The scope. He just heard the scope from Podolone. What on earth just happened? I Black Poison sure. <laughs> just heard three players, two, three players rotate through Connector right next to him. They touched. They could have reached out and hugged it. And they just, he just doesn't, he doesn't pull the trigger. So now they're fine. They can reposition. They can get two players back towards the upper site. I don't even know what he comes there. Like, what's the communication? One, no, two. Two right next to me. Like, wait, now they're three? not next to me. I don't know which direction they went. Where did yeah. they go? <laughs> yeah, that was wild. But now it seems basically everything's back to square one for the most part. ATK seems to want to go over towards that B site. Ben Leeds gets that opening kill. He's fragging tonight, baby. Ponal, I'm going to try to do that as well. Not going to work out. Ben Leeds grabs two. Stellar catches one on the cross. There was a low HP player. I think he should be able to take down here, and he will. Tens is going to try to stick that bomb. No, he's going to fake it out and try to peek here. Maybe lighten the load here before he tries to do put that bomb down. 
He's gonna fake it out again, and he's gonna peek. That's one down. Gets a second, maybe a third. Does he get it? And somehow Tens gets a triple. What just happened? He's done it again, Mike. Tens has never met a 1v3 he didn't like. What Bro. a round to come alive. He's been struggling a little bit here on Overpass, but sometimes you just need a hero. And in this round, Tens is ATK's knight in shining armor. Not only that, look at the money. He has really upset the apple cart for Party Astronauts. They're going to have two SMGs into this. It's not great for ATK either, but what a clutch round to keep some momentum in their favor to prevent this from really getting out of hand and still make a game of it. That was a classic tens round. And that might signal that he's starting to wake up here. You know, sometimes if you're tens, you just need like a good 20 rounds to warm up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was wild, Mike. Wow. But it's going to be a fast hit here. Over towards B. Bentley's going to do it again. That's a double. Making a triple for Bentley. So he matches tens in the last round. JT going to finally trade him out. Stellar is going to finish off the last two. So fast pace play doesn't work out. That is a big confidence builder for party astronauts after losing that 3v1. Ben Leitz is doing work tonight. Have you heard about the young fragging talent, Ben Leitz? Just pure aim. All the aim. Big he brain. He also comes with a brain. He does come with a brain, which is always nice. Absolutely. That's a nice combo. I see uh, C9 Ben Leet getting spammed in chat. Uh, he just might after that one. I mean, that was, that was he's beautiful. really been acquitting himself well in playoffs as well. I'm excited to see him on land. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's a fun guy to watch, that's for sure. So, two uh, hectic rounds, Mike. I'm, uh, I'm out of breath right now. I got to be honest. Right? Well, this one should be a calm one for you. It's just pistols. We say just pistols. You never know. They've got Deegs on the side of ATK. There's two of them, JT, JT and Tens. We, they, we just call them JT and T. Nice. So they've got the D. We'll see what they can do with them. Yeah, I mean, when you got Tens has a, have that D in his hands, uh, you never know what's going to happen. I feel like they're going to push through this smoke on a pistol round. Interesting choice, but they haven't paid for it just yet, and they're going to continue into our site, but MOTM, it's his time to farm. That's a triple for him, baby. And then Party Astronauts, uh, Paul Alone and Robbie are going to finish off the last two. So, clean round for them. They're not going to have an issue buying for the next round or two. So, ATK, they really got to scrounge a win right here. They're going to be able to buy, and they actually get a good buy coming out of this one. But they really, really want to have this one. Otherwise, it's going to be map point here. So that 3k clutch from tens a few rounds ago really got the engine started, but then Ben Leet's 3k in turn kind of slashed the tires, and the car is kind of shuddering to a halt at this point. This is sort of their last attempt, a nice injection of potential, but this is, is really it. No op available, just going to be rifles, somewhat limited utility. They've got to make it happen here in round number 26, and if it doesn't happen right now, party astronauts are likely going to close out map one. To be fair, that was kind of the expected result once we saw the veto. This is nothing out of the ordinary. Frankly, they've made a pretty good game of it. Party Astronauts has run over many teams on this map, but uh, we'll see. ATK, they've still got a chance here. It just all has to happen here, and at this point, they've got two smokes and a flash to get onto a site, and past that, they're just going to be relying on their aim. Look at this x-ray right now. Two T's right on the other side of the wall. They're going to boost up. MOTM spots it out before it happens. You can see the shadow of Domster as well. Uh-oh. Conalone going to be in a little bit of trouble, but he is able to respond. But MOTM has gone down, and it's going to be 3v2. They're going to continue to try to get on towards site, but Conalone shows up. Tries to spam tents through the wall, but now we're in a 3v1 situation, Mike. Are we going to see it again? He will fake it out. Ponalone watching the right position, but no, he puts away his op. And he still hits it through the wall. Why not? And Why not? Why does he take the peek again? There's no reason, Ponalone. You can't give him opportunity once more. We've already seen tens do it once. It'd be a catastrophe if it happened twice, but Stellar and Ben Leet, they work in tandem. They're not giving him anything for free, and they secure map point. This is the first map of the best of three, and Party Astronauts now in great position to close it out. It's going to be SMGs on the other side. We got three Mac 10s We got an MP5. We got a Scout, and this would take an absolute miracle from ATK to hold on. Party Astronauts looking to shut them out here on Overpass and take us through to what other map but Vertigo. That'll be interesting, Mike. Uh, I'm yeah. looking forward to it. That's going to be spicy, that's for sure. I just hope uh, ATK doesn't need a 40 bomb from 10s to play well. I mean, the thing about Vertigo, right? Again, Party Astronauts have only played it once. 
But they've also always left it in vetoes, so it's interesting. There's the skewer for Ben Leet. He's been on all game, and he locks down Monster once more. It's going to be a third for him. Why not add on to this ridiculous total? He's at 27 right now, and maybe Ben Leet's going to be chasing for the full ace. But never a player to overextend. He's going to be content with what he's got and fade back. They've got the bomb. This is full control. A minute 10 on the clock. But JT and 10s just have an SMG and a scout to work with. And no control over the bomb. This is a hopeless situation. This is dire. Not even 10s should be able to work this miracle. Yeah, this is a big ask right now. 15-2-11. Uh, 5v2. The bomb is in the control of the CTs. They're just going to spray down 10 through the smoke, and JT's just like, just take me. Get this one over with already. It's 1v5. I, I don't want to try this.